So I was talking yesterday about the SPIRIT 2 trial in CML, which is uh, the largest phase 3 randomized trial comparing imatinib with dasatinib. It involves 814 patients, uh, 407 in each group. Um, and I was giving a talk about the results of that trial for two years and particularly focusing on some of the safety and practical aspects of using the drugs in the trial. So what we found in SPIRIT2 was compared with imatinib to had about a significantly higher rate of molecular response, high levels of major molecular response for example. Um, but there's no difference in overall survival between dasatinib and imatinib, which is a theme that has been seen in many other similar trials as well. So higher PCR response rates, no difference in overall survival at the moment. What I also was presenting yesterday was um, some of the safety data, particularly focusing on plural effusion. So about one in four patients in our trial, uh, it's 24%, uh, got a plural effusion. And the point I was particularly emphasizing uh, is that plural effusion can occur for the first time quite late. So some patients were getting plural effusion four or five years after being on the drug. And that's not always appreciated by other medical teams apart from hematologists. So I presented a couple of cases where patients had been seen by another general medical team with a plural effusion, but with perhaps some other medical things going on, a bit of heart failure perhaps, a slightly older patient where there could be other reasons for plural effusion, but that medical team weren't aware of the association between dasatinib and, and particularly late plural effusion. So I was pointing out there are practical things that can be done by hematologists like putting a standard block of text in their clinic letters to GPs to highlight the fact that dasatinib can be associated with plural effusion, maybe emphasizing to the patients themselves to tell any doctors they see that even if they've been on this medicine for many years, uh, plural effusion can still occur. And doing that, if people are aware, it's usually a fairly straightforward thing to manage with interruption of the treatment and restarting at a lower dose. Most patients uh, don't have recurrent effusions and can continue taking the drug with good efficacy.